Hello, and welcome to a series of videos about EcoStructure GeoSCADA Expert. GeoSCADA Expert is the remote SCADA and telemetry software product from Schneider Electric. My name is Steve, and I'm going to review how you can get the best performance from your system, particularly the data gathering part. GeoSCADA has unrivaled features for scaling up systems, servers, databases and clients. With these big numbers and the recommended computing infrastructure, you'll need to configure the system effectively and ensure that changes to the system are also managed. With great power, you also have responsibility. A simple view of SCADA systems goes like this. The SCADA device driver reads a value from a device such as an RTU, PLC or OPC server, and then it writes it to the SCADA database. It also gets written to the SCADA historian. Then the SCADA client displays the new data on the screen. There's a big problem with this when you want to scale it up. We're often reporting the same values over and over again for no good reason. This also uses networking, storage and CPU and just will not scale. So please don't do this with GeoSCADA. If you add on event storage, alarm handling, logic, and derived data, and SQL queries, there'll then be an overload of redundant activity, slowing your system down. Added to this, GeoSCADA does more work than a clockwork SCADA system. GeoSCADA extracts and stores more information because it supports RTUs with time log data. You can see that any individual data update includes previous value updates, quality, current and previous states, process and alarm information. And the historian also stores more than just values. It includes reason data and supports controlled updates. So what's the answer to this? Firstly, recognizing that SCADA and particularly GeoSCADA is an information handler. An unchanged value can be ignored. If a value doesn't change, we just don't need to know. But if the communication status or quality changes, or the value changes by a significant amount, then we do need that, and quickly. So you need significant change values where the change carries information, and alarm threshold crossings, where you need to know quickly if there's a problem, and also some slow period values, perhaps for reporting, and the other values are not relevant. GeoSCADA can filter raw data into information, and there are different parts of GeoSCADA available to do this. This way, the device driver can read the device quickly so that alarm and change data is acted on quickly, and clients can show the data meaningfully on screen, both in context and without confusing noise. So we're happy to scan primitive devices such as Modbus quickly, but for more advanced protocols, we can get the device to send the data intelligently. Newer protocols have evolved, which move SCADA on from Modbus. This can turn the scan of devices into specific event data and unsolicited messaging. This can make SCADA react faster to useful changes. This video won't cover specific protocol features or other performance issues such as logic. That'll be the subject of some future videos. Let's look at the filtering capabilities in GeoSCADA and show you how to set it up, starting with the configuration of driver features. I'll include some common driver features here and point out the fundamentals. In GeoSCADA, there's a type of driver we call simple, covering Modbus, OPC and some PLC types. There's also a type called advanced, also covering Modbus, OPC and protocols like DNP3. These two driver types work a bit differently from each other, so I'll try and highlight that as we go on. Starting with the simple driver, let's look at the scanner. You'll want the normal scan rate to be fast enough for operators to respond to alarms. You don't need to select the always update on scan checkbox unless you need the scanner statistics to update every scan, which could be a resource problem. For digital points, there's usually nothing extra configure. You'll get to see state changes and there are no timed reports. 
For analog points, you need to set the alarm thresholds so you know when the value crosses them. Also, you configure significant change so you can see when the value moves. Note that for these percentage fields, enter 1 for 1%, not 0 0.01. For the OPC data access simple driver, there are some more fields to control data flow from the OPC server. In addition to the significant change percentage, there is an alarm delay or persistence. But the important addition here is the background logging feature, where you can specify a fixed time for which data is processed. Use this to supplement the significant change and alarm limit value processing. Note that there's also a filter on data to be sent for historic data, where you can select only change values, background log time report values, or both. This is another feature that you can use to control data storage. For example, you may only need to store timed reports in the GeoSCADA historian. For advanced drivers, such as advanced Modbus, OPC, and protocols like DNP3 and for SCADA pack, there are many more features and greater diversity to allow you more flexibility. Advanced drivers provide ways to configure re data reading rates by the scanner or device group, and they also enable specific options for individual points. Here you can see the advanced OPC settings for group and point, where you can set up polling on each. Once again, the objective is to filter out the noise and keep the information. For OPC, Please consider using asynchronous mode to move the filtering into the OPC server. Settings for the filter are defined on the group. It's really important to recognise that confidence polling is a feature you must use sparingly. Confidence polling forces data updates and storage across the system and is only needed, if at all, for hourly or longer intervals. For DNP3, the objective of the configuration is to filter the useful information from the data source using events. Events can be polled for by the driver or sent unsolicited by the data source if the network permits. Events could be digital state changes, analog limit crossings, report deadband or periodic updates. They can be supplemented by slower periodic scanning using scan groups. Our advice for you is to pick a slow confidence poll and don't not to abuse this privilege, which will cascade to poor performance if unchecked. Even more concern is over the scheduled integrity poll, as this is the DNP3 terminology for whole device confidence polling and is often abused. Again, this is a complex area and I recommend further reading of the documentation. Let's move to the next step the historian. A well-configured system will store only the historic data which is needed for trends and data analytics. The GeoSCADA historian allows a filter to be set up for every point. This can choose to write history using change size and or time interval. And here you can see the choice is to filter out changes smaller than 3% and prevent storage of consecutive values within one minute you can pick values suitable for your application. Finally, you have a line of defense in updating client displays. While it might not seem a problem to update client displays rapidly, you need to consider how this scales up when the number of clients increases. At the server, we recommend a minimum on change or interest update rate of one second. Use the server configuration tool to change this. And at the Vuex client, we recommend that both fast and normal data update rates are one second too. These settings are in the Vuex options menu available to administrators. Users may not notice these minor changes when the screen is updated, although they will see improved performance when trends are displayed and updated or when they have multiple screens. So it's worth doing. In summary, we've covered the basics of data gathering efficiency, looking at driver behavior, the historian, and the server client interface. I hope you found this review helpful. There's a lot more to good SCADA performance, including the setup of the historian, logic, configuration, and other calculations, not forgetting SQL queries and reporting. 
These will be covered in future videos. There's a lot to discover in our new versions, and we're continuing to innovate with new features in future releases. Please keep in touch with our blog, knowledge base and forums. And thank you.